give you an idea on a little trick or a little method you can use in the days following pollination to get an, uh, at least a quick take on how successful pollination has been. Uh, it won't be something that you can use necessarily to estimate yield, but you can at least get a quick take on whether or not pollination was successful or perhaps whether pollination was a complete failure. Right. So first we're going to look at this ear where the silks are, have just begun to emerge overnight. And, uh, and we'll open it up, we'll show you the silk as, uh, as they're attached to the cob. Um, and as I, you know, before I do this, just want to indicate that these silks are attached to the individual ovules on the ear. And when the pollen grain lands on those silks, it literally germinates and develops what's called a pollen tube. And that pollen tube penetrates the silk and develops inside of the silk carrying the male genetic material downward towards the ovules. And within about 24 hours of landing on a viable silk, that genetic material in the pollen grain will have traveled the length of the silk and have fertilized the ovule. After it's fertilized the ovule, within maybe another 24 hours, the base of that silk collapses and eventually detaches from the now newly developing kernel. And it's that fact that we can use to make an early assessment on uh, how successful or not pollination has been by virtue of how many of the silks are detaching from the ear. All you need for this, uh, for this method is a, a good sharp knife of some kind. And typically what I do just to simplify uh, the process a little bit is I slice off the ends of the husk leaf and the ear shank until I just get down to the base of the developing cob. Look, you can see the, uh, the, the ovules or the, the potential kernels there right at the base of the cob. You don't want to just rip off these husk leaves because then you're likely going to rip off the silks yourself. And that and therefore is the other purpose for this knife is, is you just uh, make one long slit down the length of that cob, taking care naturally not to cut yourself. And once you've sliced through those husk leaves, then all you do is literally just unwrap it and you expose the ear and the silks and then you carefully uh, just remove the ear and the silks from the husk leaves. Ear out, you do a little shake and, and basically then at that point, you're just estimating what percent of the silks are still attached and, and therefore likely not pollinated. So not surprisingly on this young ear shoot that we've uh, just dissected where the silks probably just came out overnight and have not yet been pollinated, uh, essentially all of the silks are still uh, remaining attached to this ear. One of the things that you can see on this ear is also the differences in the length of the silks from the base of the ear to the tip of the ear, which again reinforces the fact that initial silk elongation begins near the base and slowly works itself up the cob until the, the tip silks are the last ones to begin elongating. And then you can imagine that on you know, these silks that were just emerging from these husk leaves before I cut open the, the husk, um, these longer silks were the ones that were just emerging from that husk tissue. The shorter ones were not yet, uh, not yet visible from the husk and therefore they're not even able to be pollinated yet today. A nearby plant that's literally only two plants away from the one that was just beginning to show silks has had silks out now for probably several days. We'll do the same ear shake test on this ear and see how many of those silks are, are dropping off compared to that first one that we looked at. And, then, and in the process of removing these final husk leaves, you can already see the deterioration of the silks. They're turning brown, and you can already tell simply by virtue of the fact you can see the base of that ear uh, that the silks are beginning to drop away. So then as you finish unwrapping the rest of the husk leaves, and do the same shake test compared to that first ear that we looked at where almost every single silk was still attached to the ovules. This ear would suggest that easily the majority of the cob has been fertilized with pollen. 
Um, and if you look close at the remaining ones that are still holding on, many of them uh, are already beginning to discolor and suggesting that they're, they're very close to the process of dropping off. And so for all intents and purposes, this particular ear uh, appears to have been nearly 100% uh, successfully fertilized with the pollen. And, and at least so in this particular year, it's gotten through that important stage of the pollination process. Uh, what remains to be seen with continued drought stress though is whether the uh, newly developing kernels that are forming as a result of the, of the pollination, whether they will survive uh, without aborting under continu continued stress.